Today we're going to talk about the top five things that you need to survive in an SHTF situation. Now there's a multitude of things that really need to be done. I mean, you're talking about life, you're talking about survival. But if you're new to prepping, or even if you've been prepping for a while, these are the top five things to me that you need to consider. Now we're going to talk about the top five and then I'm going to give you five alternate things that honestly are just almost as important, but the top five is what we really need to look at. And I want to help you to focus on those top five things. Number one is get in shape. You know, we live a very sedimentary lifestyle and a lot of times we're not out and about, we're not doing a lot of hard work. And so you need to get in shape. Uh, even if it's just walking on a regular basis, you can just start with that. Now for us, we have a treadmill, we have weights, we have a pool. Uh, I do a lot of swimming and it really helps to keep me in shape. Uh, and those are low impact type, type things. Uh, but if you want to get out and really get in good shape, you know, you can even take classes, you can take exercise, you can go to the gym, you can start really working out. Uh, but just get out and start exercising. You can go on hikes. Uh, that's a big one. It's a lot of fun. It's very enjoyable. So really number one is get yourself in shape because if you have a crisis situation, your physical fitness is really going to be important. Number two is security and self-defense. Being ready to be able to defend what you have, defend your family. And honestly, number one uh, is a flashlight. Uh, having a really good flashlight that'll, that'll really shine and bright up a large area. Last night we had our driveway alarm went off three times. I mean, it just went off three times. And it's usually very reliable. So first thing I did, I got up, it was one in the morning. I got my big flashlight out, started shining it around from uh, inside the house, just looking at the area around where our driveway alarm is. You know, it really lit up the area. And so that is a big part. Uh, and two, you can use it as a self-defense weapon. I mean, there's a lot of things, but light will deter a lot of criminal activities or people around your place. But also, obviously, the best is having a firearm. And honestly, there's not really a substitute. Now, unfortunately, people live in different places and sometimes you have a lot of restrictions. Uh, here in the U.S., you know, we have a lot of availability to firearms, but in other countries, that can be a problem. For me, if I only had one firearm, if that's all I could have, is a handgun. And the reason for that is because I can use it for my personal defense, I can use it to defend my family and my home, but I can also carry it wherever I go without drawing undue attention. Uh, so when you have a long gun, that can be a problem. Uh, I'm gonna have a video annotated right above, and this is gonna be the top five firearms you need to survive. They fit different roles, and so you can check that video out. But number one, I would get a handgun. Also, a really good knife. Fixed blade knife is the best, uh, but also just a good folding knife that's good quality. Also, pepper spray. You kind of have to look and see where you live, what the laws are, but you definitely need to protect your family because honestly, self-defense is a basic human right. It's not just part of the Second Amendment. Number three is food and water. Uh, you need to have food, guys. I mean, having a month's supply of food is the minimum. Uh, one thing about having food put back ahead of time and water is that you don't have to go out. If crisis starts, if riots are happening, you can stay right there in your home and you can eat, and we have just experienced that. And the one thing about all of this is, guys, we have just experienced a lot of this on a low-key level. Now, unless you live in some major cities, you need to have your supplies at home. You need to have that food. And one thing that's really easy to do is just canned food or dried food, whether it's dried beans and rice or whether it's the different canned food that you eat. And one thing about that is, is that it lasts for a long time. So you can store that up. Make sure that you pick out foods that you like and you're gonna eat. Uh, make sure you try them. Make sure you, you test it uh, before it comes down to where you're depending on that food to survive. And with water, uh, you know, having water jugs, that's great, having water bottles. But what's more important is having a way to filter water. And the best source that I know, and one we've used for a number of years, is the Berkey filter system. And it's a big stainless steel cylinder. Each filter will filter out 3,000 gallons of water. We have the Imperial, it'll filter 12,000 gallons of water before we need to replace the filters. And we use it every day. We use it for our tea, our coffee, all the different things, cooking. We like to use that water. It takes out a lot of the 
the contaminants that are even in your regular drinking water. But if water supplies are shut down, which happens a lot of times uh, when you have unrest, utilities are down. Having a water source is extremely important. So food and water is number three, and that's a big one. Now number four is medical supplies. Guys, if first responders are having a hard time getting to people, uh, we've seen it right now with 911 calls. Sometimes it's an hour, two hours, three hours, or none at all, no response. And so having your medical supplies, a tourniquet, you know, compression gauze, chest seals, having a good trauma kit, but also having your regular basic medical things that you're gonna need, antacids, you know, Benadryl, Imodium, your cough syrups, all the normal things, antibiotic ointment, your bandages, band-aids, things like that. Have a good, well-stocked medical kit. One of the resources that I depend on is Medical Gear Outfitters, and that's the Skinny Medic channel on YouTube. And they do a great job of really quality medical gear that you can trust. Also, AMP3, which is USN ER doc, he's an emergency room doctor in Portland, Oregon, and he has really quality kits that he puts together as well. Number five is cash. Guys, having cash on hand. Uh, now, right now, we're going through a coin shortage, and so people are using cash less and less because you're not getting change back. But having your cash set aside, and I would recommend having smaller bills, uh, but have about $500 minimum of cash. Now, in a really bad economic situation, you know, we can't have hyperinflation and you can lose the value of your cash. But having that cash in case ATMs, in case uh, card readers are down, you have cash to be able to get the supplies that are, you need in an emergency. But having cash is king and you need to make sure you have it. But I would also supplement that with silver coins, whether it's junk silver or it's even walking liberties and things like that because that's gonna retain its value. It's gonna protect your wealth. You may need to use that silver to be able to get you through because a lot of times when economic situations happen, a lot of places open up to being able to accept silver as tender and silver and cash. Now guys, those are the top five and get those taken care of first and then you can move on to the next five that we're gonna talk about. And the first on the list is power. You need to have some source of power, whether it's solar panels, whether it's a generator and some kind of kerosene heater or some kind of way to be able to keep yourself warm. Uh, winter's coming at this point, but even during the summertime, it's great to have that power and it's great to have the backups. And so there's a lot of choices out there and you need to look at them and it can be expensive, but a great way to go again is a solar battery backup and then make sure that you have some kind of alternative heat source. And your standard battery backups are great to keep your phone charged, your flashlights, and different things that you're gonna need. Number two is your communications. Now you have your phone, and that's great, but if cell service goes down, what are you gonna do? And for me, we have ham radios, but we also have two-way radios. Uh, you know, you gotta have a ham license to be able to use a ham radio, unless it's an emergency situation. So really, you know, having ham radios, you could use for both, both two-way radio and as a ham radio. Also, you can use a lot of internet services. A lot of times, internet is gonna continue to run, and if it does, you're able to access Skype or Facebook, WeChat, you can email, and so you can get communication out. So think about those alternative ways to communicate, not just your phone. Number three, tools. You know, having your basic tools like screwdrivers, hammers, wrenches, pliers, uh, those are essential in everyday life and they'll be even more essential when it comes down to doing repairs and making sure that you keep your stuff maintained. But also having shovels, axes, pickaxe, uh, hatchets, you know, saws, knives. Those are hand tools that can really come in handy. Plus having a good chainsaw, uh, you know, and you wanna have some fuel put back so having those tools ready to go and having them maintained. Getting training. Uh, there's a lot of classes out there, medical training, firearms training, um, you know, Red Cross. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do, but you can also train with what you have and you can use the internet at this point right now to be able to learn and to get your skill level up. If you have a fire starter and you've never started fires, you need to get out and do that. Uh, you need to filter your water, try it out, see how it works. I mean, you need to get these things that you have and use them and learn how to train with them. Number five is a go bag. Uh, and you can call it a get home bag, a bug out bag, you can call it whatever you want to. But having your, your essentials, your survival essentials, 
having some tools in there, having a change of clothes, having your toiletries, just having a bag set aside that you can grab and go. Maybe some food items, maybe water filters, all those things that fall into survival. Now guys, this list was quick and there's a lot of things that apply to each and every item on this list. And we have a lot of videos out there where you can access them and look and see. And guys, the big thing is, is just to get started, get those top five, and then you can start with the others. Uh, but you need to make sure that you're out there doing what you can. Now when it comes to like food, guys, just buy a little bit every week. And before long, you'll realize that you have a nice supply of food and toilet paper if you're really smart. And make sure you're buying your water and getting that filter system and getting those things together. And you can do it incrementally. You don't have to go out and spend thousands of dollars up front. But guys, if you don't have any of these things, you definitely need to kick it into gear because we have seen 2020 is just crazy. And we don't know what can happen next. And 2021 may be great, may not. But it's always great to be prepared. So guys, here's the deal. We prepare to live. And that's the most important thing. And you need certain essential items to be able to achieve that goal. And if you're serious about prepping and survival, check out Survival Dispatch Insider, one of the best resources on the web. We upload one video that's exclusive to the Insider every week. I'll have a link down below in the description. Check it out. Be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic.